Wow. I'm gonna just say it up front. I'm really struggling making today's video. I don't know why, maybe it's because it's unscripted. I usually prepare a whole script and do a bunch of research, but this is gonna be a laid back, chill out video and I can't seem to do it. I made myself a chai latte. There is a cozy fur in the background because I wanted this to be cozy and chill. So hopefully we can get in that mood together. It's time to talk about some of the movies that I saw both in June and July because I procrastinated the June one. So now we're compiling them. It's probably good. I've seen some other people on YouTube, uh, really talented people make these kind of videos. You guys watch so much stuff. So it's probably better that I compile two months because now we have a solid 20 titles or something to get through. And so let's not waste any more time. You can go down into the description box and see all the timestamps for all the movies if you're interested in sort of skipping ahead to the bits and pieces that you're interested in hearing about. Otherwise, let's just get started. I'm using the app Letterbox. You can find me there. My username should now be at biopic. Just let me know in the comments what your username is so I can follow you back. It would be great to have more friends on there. Let's just get started. Why am I even blabbering on? First thing I saw, I actually went to the theaters and it was a really fun, bittersweet feeling because they had been closed for a really long time. And so I saw Nobody, directed by Ilya Neischeller. I'll just include it on the screen. It's a movie with Bob Odenkirk and I really do Hope that Bob Odenkirk is having a good recovery. It was a really sad day to come in onto Twitter and find out that he had had a heart attack, but it was really sort of heartwarming seeing how many people actually appreciate this person. He's done a great job in a lot of things. He's just very likable, to be honest. Christopher Lloyd is also in this, and it's always good with some childhood nostalgia, so I appreciated that. Nobody is kind of like John Wick, but entertaining. <laughs> It's funny. It has the same sort of action-packed scene, but without the crappy techno music. And Bob Odenkirk, to me, is more likable than Keanu Reeves. There, I've said it. You're, you're entitled to get offended by what I just said. Let's have a discussion about it in the comments below. I still haven't seen John Wick 3, though. So maybe I'll change my opinion, but the John Wick movies, they're okay, but they're not really the most enjoyable films that I've seen. Next up, I saw a zombie movie. When going into this, I expected a zombie movie. I've seen this around for years because I was late to the party but I did not expect for my heart to break into a thousand little pieces. I cried. I've never cried to a zombie movie before. That is all you really need to know. Train to Busan. If you haven't seen it already, there's a guy. He is taking his daughter to visit her mom. It's her birthday. Zombie apocalypse happens. Oh no. <laughs> and then prepare to be touched by this. I thought it was great. After that, I moved on to my Elizabeth Taylor quest. I've been trying really hard to see all of her movies. I'm reading biographies about her life because I'm working on a really special video for this channel. Cleopatra is long and expensive and super boring. It is not a fun movie. If you go into this movie thinking you're studying it for the purposes of under, like sort of seeing it for what it was, it is really interesting. You're gonna have all these shots that you're just like, wow, how much did this cost? Like literally everything in this movie is extravagant. It's super expensive. The sets are huge. They're magnificent. And if there's one thing that Cleopatra knows how to do, it's how to make an entrance. So that is something that I learned from this movie. Uh, it's also 240 minutes, really long. Like I said, this is where Elizabeth Taylor met her. I mean, she married him twice, her husband, Richard Burton. She had a lot of husbands, as you may know. People say that Richard Burton was the love of her life. She has probably said that herself. Elizabeth Taylor was really beautiful. I will probably not watch it again. After that, I had a similar long, boring experience with The Woman in the Window. This movie is not that long, but it just felt really long because it was super boring. Boring. This movie has so many great actors in it. There's Amy Adams, there's Gary Oldman, Julianne Moore, Wyatt Russell was in it too. Like, oh, you'd expect that this would be great, but it really wasn't. This woman, Amy, played by Amy Adams, is just sitting around looking out, out of windows. Thinks she sees a crime, and then the best thing about it was that it had a cute cat in it. Cannot recommend. After that, I saw a movie that I feel like it's gotten mixed reviews, but I loved it. <laughs> I loved this so much. Oxygen. It's a French film with Melanie Laurent. That's some of my French. I don't know if I succeeded, but whatever. <laughs> She's one of my favorite actresses. Like, I just love the French actresses. I don't know what it is. Basically, this woman is locked in something called a cryogenic chamber, and she doesn't understand.
understand how she got there and oxygen is running out and so she's trapped in this little tube for the entire movie and you get to see Melanie's face up close where she's just I thought it was phenomenal she's phenomenal I love her I can I can only say warm warm things about this film then I had the terrible idea of watching Venom <laughs> originally when it came out in 2018 I didn't watch it because everyone said it was terrible I didn't really care for superhero movies at the time and still people are saying that it's really crappy but now there's a second one coming up and I just saw the trailer and felt like maybe I should have seen it it's also Tom Hardy and I love Tom Hardy but he's not creating this the script there's something seriously lazy about the screenwriting in this and there's some kind of weird Fifty Shades of Grey action going on between Venom and Eddie <laughs> the best thing about Venom is probably the Eminem song like the soundtrack I can definitely get behind that Okay, next up we have something really sweet and cute. I talked about it in my video where I talked about things I wanted to see in 2021. It's the Disney movie, Luca. I thought this was so sweet. I cried. I don't get why you would be disappointed by this. It was colorful. It was pretty much everything that I would have wanted out of it. It was just so incredibly cute. So the premise of Luca is that two young boys experience an unforgettable Italian summer in this little cute town called Contorosso, which it looks exactly like Monterosso, so you can just google that place. I've been there, it's fantastic. But all the fun is threatened by a deeply held secret. They're sea monsters. Oh no, it's just really sweet and cute. After that, I was really hung over one day and I decided to watch In the Heights by John M. Chu. I love musicals, but I was largely disappointed by this. I did not think it was great. It just isn't very memorable and the key fundamental scenes of this, like the things that are supposed to tug at your heartstrings is your connection to community. And I am a Swedish person. We don't really have community. <laughs> We're the kind of country where you kind of make sure that no one is outside in your apartment building before you leave so you don't have to talk to someone. I think that the problem that I had with In the Heights was that the music wasn't memorable, the color scheme wasn't memorable, it just wasn't my favorite movie. I did enjoy it as I was watching it. My last movie of June that I saw on the same day actually, on the 26th of June, it was just a hungover day. What can I say? Was Cruella. <laughs> I know that I gave Cruella the same rating as In the Heights but having let them both sink in, I enjoyed Cruella way more. Maybe it's about expectations too. Cruella, I just didn't have high expectations for, but I thought it was enjoyable. There was a really cute dog named Wink in it. It didn't really explain Cruella's origin story, I think. <laughs> I'm still a little confused by that, but it was an enjoyable movie. The punk rock feeling was fun. It was a fun movie. What more can I say? After that, we're moving on to July now. I want to talk about Halston. Halston is a mini series that you can watch on Netflix. Netflix. It's directed by Daniel Minahan and Ewan McGregor is the main character. It is a biopic drama story about Halston who is a really famous American fashion designer that I had no idea about before watching this. I have been in love with Ewan McGregor since I was 10 years old or something. I don't think that that love is ever gonna go away. <laughs> I just think that he's fabulous and I don't have, like I can't disagree that he wasn't fabulous in this as well. You had to follow Halston on his career path from like his first hat making sensation throughout his entire brand and then sort of eventually the fall of Halston and it was really enjoyable. I gave it three and a half stars. My next Alyssa Taylor movie had to be Little Women. Little Women is a book originally but there are four different movie versions of it and I had previously only seen the one by Greta Gerwig who came out most recently. If I compare that to the one from 1949 starring Alyssa Taylor I mean, there really isn't any competition. The Greta Gerwig version is just outstanding compared to this. <laughs> this I thought was enjoyable because it's like an old school movie. It was cute. At the same time, it was also kind of boring. I found that the character, my name is Josephine by the way, and I never realized that the main character, Jo, that that was also her name. So that's something that I learned. I don't think that Josephine is the name that you see a lot in movies. I haven't come across it anyway. Josephine in this movie, or Jo, is played by June Allison. The way the character Joe was written in this was just not very fun, I thought.
lot. She was very loud and very annoying. And I understand that she's supposed to be sort of norm breaking for the time that she's in, but Greta Gerwig's Joe or Saoirse Ronan's Joe did a far better job at that. Elizabeth Taylor is so beautiful in everything that she's in. It was a little bit sort of jarring seeing her as a blonde, but um, yeah, it worked. After that, I thought, why not watch Mortal Kombat? I hated it. I don't really have much more to say about it. It was really boring and I haven't even played Mortal Kombat. I did not know who any of these characters were and I did not care because they didn't present them in a way that actually made me care for a single character in this film. It was also kind of confusing. Which character was which? Why were they even doing what they were doing? I gave it one star. After that, it was time for me to hit theaters again. Finally, I got to see Black Widow. I don't think I've ever been as excited about a movie and we had to wait like a really long time for this one to come out. And I think that was sort of part of the problem with Black Widow is that it should have been released years ago. It was enjoyable. In Black Widow, which is directed by Kate Shortland, we get to follow Black Widow in between Civil War and Infinity War, I suppose, the wars. <laughs> and she's going back to Russia to hang out with her old Russian family there. It was a solid, enjoyable movie. I would say that. But the character Taskmaster, for example, was to me hugely flawed. It would have been nice if that character actually had some dialogue to have some, I don't know, agency. Florence Pugh did not disappoint. I am so excited to see what they're gonna do with the Florence Pugh character in the future. I mean, I could probably watch Black Widow again. It was an enjoyable time. I severely had to pee throughout the entire thing, <laughs> but I just really didn't want to miss anything. So it was quite a, an enjoyable but painful experience. And I'm sure that no one is surprised by this, but I loved Loki. <laughs> Loki was amazing. Loki had me looking forward to every single Wednesday for a solid six weeks, and I find that amazing. Loki is directed by Kate Heron and obviously features Tom Hiddleston as Loki, and my all time favorite Owen Wilson as Mobius. And there are other great actors and actresses like Sofia DiMartino, Tara Strong, Wonmi Mosaku, Gugu Matara, that all sort of came together to make the show amazing. Yeah, it was just an enjoyable ride and it did set up the next stages of the MCU in such a perfect, enjoyable way. Like it really made me excited for the villains we're about to encounter. It made me excited for the possibilities of everything that might happen in What If. There's a lot of things to look forward to this year. After finishing Loki, I was inspired to watch The Good, The Bart, and The Loki, which is a short film that you can watch on Disney+. Plus. It's a Simpsons parody type of thing on Loki, but it was really bad. I don't recommend it. <laughs> you get to see Bart as he turns into Loki. I don't know. It's supposed to be funny, but it wasn't really funny. Next up, something that I saw on the 17th of July is The Tomorrow War. It's an Amazon Prime original. And and it features Chris Pratt and the world. They've sort of invented time travel to go back in time because something is attacking them in the future and they need the people from the past to help fight some sort of war. People have been saying, oh, it was enjoyable at least, but I didn't find it that enjoyable. It's like this movie didn't really know what it wanted to be. Like suddenly you were feeling like you were in a video game and the next you were in a slasher from the 80s. It wasn't really consistent. It was sort of like the aliens of the story had come and written the script. Like they were trying to pretend to be human. Like the characters are almost there, but they're just a little bit flat. The dialogue almost feels like the way people would naturally speak, but it's not quite there. I also don't really like movies where there are a bunch of explosions and people just fly in the wind as something explodes behind them. And this movie had about nine of those or something. Had this, on the other hand, been a Bollywood movie. <laughs> Wouldn't it have been great to have like those explosions and Chris Pratt dancing and aliens like running around in the background? I want that to be made. So I would love it if someone could do The Tomorrow War, but a Bollywood version. After The Tomorrow War, that was sadly disappointing, I watched something that I really liked, Till Death. <laughs> Uh, it's a movie directed by Scott Dale and it has Megan Fox in it. I don't think that I've seen a lot of things with Megan Fox in it. So Megan Fox's character is in this kind of uncomfortable relationship. You don't really understand why, but he's kind of creepy for some reason. And then they go to this lake house in the middle of the winter and then she wakes up and he's dead. <laughs> and she's handcuffed to his body and she has to try to fight off these people trying to come to kill her. And it's just enjoyable. I wasn't aware that I was 
was watching something that was a thriller horror movie. I assumed that it would be thriller just judging from the photos, but I, I'm not so good with the whole horror thing. So I did have to pause the film a couple of times. I'm gonna try to get better. Maybe I'll have to do some watch alongs or something here on YouTube where I watch some horror films and actually get through them without pausing. <laughs> I mean, the first part was a little bit slow. It doesn't really get good until you get to the part where she wakes up, so to speak. I can recommend it if you're up for something that has a little bit of blood in it that will feel a bit thrilling. Till Death is definitely worth a watch. After that, I saw something that I was so happily surprised by. Pig. Pig was amazing. Directed by Michael Sarnowski. I was gonna say Sarkozy, but that, that is wrong. This film stars Nicolas Cage and he loses his pig. He lives out in the middle of the woods. He has a pig that he loves more than anything else and someone steals it from him and obviously he has to get it back. I thought this film really played with your expectations and so I'm not gonna talk about it too much. I wanna let you experience it on your own. I thought this was a beautiful story about grief. It made me inspired to go cook something nice for myself. That's all I can say. So go wash it. I enjoyed it. Next up I saw the movie that Amy Poehler herself has directed and I'm quite a huge fan of Amy Poehler. Moxie. Moxie was not that great. It's a movie about these teenagers and this teenager in particular who finds her feminist voice and who wants to fight for something. There's a lot of things that you could discuss within feminism that falls underneath the feminism umbrella and I, I felt like they were trying to cram too many things in there and so most of the things were only surface level. They weren't as nuanced as they should be when you're talking about something that is political. So ultimately I think that it did fail in some aspects just because of that. Still, it was enjoyable. It's something that you can watch if you don't want to strain your brain too much. I thought that the relationship between the main character, I think her name was Val, if I don't remember it wrong? Vivian, I remembered it wrong. Uh, and uh, Seth, uh, played by Nico Hiraga. It, it was cute. I've never been to a date in a funeral home before, but I mean, it looked sweet. I, I, I would definitely do that. <laughs> And I finished my movie month off strong by watching Bo Burnham Inside. Everyone else had already seen this. I was late to the game. I was very late to the game, but I'm very excited that my two coworkers told me to watch this because it was a lot of fun. It, it was really enjoyable. I feel like I should have done something as creative with my inside moments during the pandemic, but <laughs> I mean, I probably wouldn't have the funds to create something like this. <laughs> like I am obsessed with the music. I'm obsessed with the kind of 80s synth type of music. So I'll definitely be listening to these songs for a long time ahead. That was all of my letterboxed views. Then at the same time during these months, I also watched all three seasons of The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I am so in love with this show. And now that I'm finished with the seasons that are out, I feel like there's a, there's a hole in my chest and I don't know what to fill it with. <laughs> the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel is about this woman who is starting to pursue stand-up comedy and her struggles. She lives in the 50s. It's the same showrunner as Gilmore Girls and Gilmore Girls was my show when I was growing up. I loved it so so much. So it was only natural that I would love this show. I am obsessed with the hat, with the gloves, with the makeup, with the sets, with the dialogue, with the characters. The characters in the show are phenomenal. They're so good. If there's anything that I think that you should watch out of everything that was in this video, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel for sure. I don't know how I'm gonna be able to hold up until the next season comes out. I heard it might come out towards the end of the year. Let's hope for that because I need it. <laughs> So those were all the titles that I saw during June and July. I am so happy to announce that I've gone from being in a movie slump to being super excited about movies again. And I think working on Biopic and being on film Twitter has really sort of opened my eyes up to all the exciting movies and TV shows that are to come for the rest of the year. And so I just think that there were some great titles over the span of these two months that made me excited about movies again. It, we, we had Pig, we had Oxygen, we had Train to Busan, we had Loki. So there are a lot of exciting things on my radar. If you've seen any of the TV shows or the movies that I talked about, please talk to me in the comments below. I would love to discuss them with you. Also, again, if you watched it all the way here, make sure you let me know what your username on Letterboxd is so we can communicate as we're watching things. Thank you for getting through this unscripted video with me. <laughs> I've been sitting here for like 40 minutes. My chai latte is definitely cold. <laughs>
Don't forget to follow Biopic on Twitter or Instagram. I post all of my movie thoughts and reviews on there. There will be a new video soon, I promise. I hope you have a great week. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!